Hi, and welcome to this edition of the Our Catholic Prayers podcast. I'm Christopher Castagnoli for OurCatholicPrayers.com. The Jesus Prayer is a short, simple prayer that can put you in the right frame of mind to get closer to God. And, at being just one sentence long, it's quite easy to memorize. The prayer itself follows. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. We find a similar version of this prayer in Luke's Gospel, in Our Lord's Parable of the Pharisee and the Tax Collector. Both of them are praying in the temple, in Jesus' account. Yet the contrite tax collector is justified before God rather than the smug Pharisee, who's boasting about his religious achievements. We read this in Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. What does the tax collector ask of God here? Be merciful to me, a sinner. This is in Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 13. Outside of this Gospel account, the Jesus Prayer can be traced back to the Eastern Orthodox Church from the 4th century. St. John Climacus recommended it in his work, The Ladder of Divine Ascent, from around 600 A.D. It is still a staple of many in the Orthodox community, although it can be prayed by anyone, of course. Because of its simplicity, it is often prayed on knots in prayer ropes in the Eastern Church as an aid to concentration to help people pray without ceasing, as St. Paul urged Christians to do in his first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 17. The Jesus Prayer is also the focus of the 19th century Russian classic entitled The Way of a Pilgrim. This book chronicles one man's attempt to follow St. Paul's advice about praying without ceasing with the help of the Jesus Prayer as a means to achieve union with God. The Catechism of the Catholic Church notes that the sentiment expressed in the Jesus Prayer opens our hearts both to humanity's misery and Christ's mercy. This is taken from paragraph 2667 of the Catechism. Indeed, it has been called fittingly a prayer of the heart. It is wonderfully versatile as well. It can be prayed repeatedly as an aid to meditation by religious or just as a simple way for anyone to check in with our Lord during a busy day, to be aware of his presence and avail themselves of his comfort and strength. The Jesus Prayer is also good in that it focuses on his holy name, which, as the Catechism points out, is also a great form of prayer in and of itself. This is taken from paragraph 2668 of the Catechism. The Jesus Prayer shows us the way towards true humility. It is so easy for us, especially nowadays, to forget that we are all sinners in need of God's mercy. He is more than ready to give it to us. All we need to do is to ask for it in a sincere, heartfelt fashion. Indeed, Christ told St. Faustina, the Polish nun to whom he appeared regularly in the 1930s, that he would, as he put it, pour out a whole ocean of graces to those who would approach the fountain of his mercy. Many people nowadays seem to have lost a sense of sin, It is both very easy and very seductive to fall into the trap of moral relativism, to fall into the I'm okay, you're okay mentality in which we see everyone as basically pretty good 
and not as fellow sinners. Others seek to blame their transgressions on society at large or on their having some sort of complex. In this regard, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen bewailed the tendency of people to seek to have their sins explained away by psychoanalysis rather than to have them forgiven by our Lord in the sacrament of penance. One can imagine this tendency has only gotten worse since then. This is not meant to disparage legitimate needs for therapy and psychiatry, only their abuses and the degree to which these breed excuses for people to shut God out of their lives. Denying our sinful nature only makes things worse. Instead of asking God for his graces to help us deal with our sins, our temptations, and our troubles, we are apt then to turn away from him. We either suppress our sense of remorse or, thinking that God couldn't possibly forgive us, refuse to ask him for his mercy. This puts us at risk of falling even deeper into the black hole of sinful behavior such as abusing alcohol or drugs, while giving into despair, thinking that we can never turn to God for assistance in our misery. Don't let your sins harden your heart. As the psalm goes, if today you hear his, that is God's, voice, harden not your hearts. This is taken from Psalm 95, verse 8. Or, as our Lord said to St. Faustina, let them, that is, sinners, not fear to approach me. They are in most need of my mercy. It is important to keep in mind as well that Christ instituted the sacrament of penance, also known as confession, for us to be able to unburden ourselves of our sins to a priest acting in his name. While the Jesus prayer is a good quick way to focus on being in God's presence in all humility, it cannot and should not replace this important sacrament. While the Church only requires us to confess any mortal sins at least once a year, remember that in confession, God not only pardons your sins, but also gives you the graces to resist temptation in the future. Thus, more frequent confessions of mortal and venial sins can help tremendously in purging sin from your life. Praying the Act of Contrition, which I will link to in the description page for this podcast, both in confession and at home, perhaps in evening prayers, is a powerful way to ask God for His mercy. Still, The Jesus Prayer is a special prayer of the heart. Speaking of one's heart, keep these words from the prophet Joel from the Old Testament in mind. From the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 13. Rend your hearts and not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, patient and rich in mercy. Thanks for listening. I'm Christopher Castagnoli for OurCatholicPrayers.com. Please feel free to share this podcast. And if you're listening to it on YouTube or some other host that allows you to subscribe to podcasts, we'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Our Catholic Prayers podcast channel. Until next time, God bless.